Hi there, welcome to my session here about provisioning Red Hat OpenShift resources using Azure DevOps pipelines. Basically, what we're going to present to you on this session is how you can take advantage of using Azure DevOps pipelines and doing some integration with Red Hat OpenShift in order to create some resources. And when I talk about resources, I'm talking about how you could, for example, um, create a new instance of a new app or provision any other task related to, for example, uh, creating new resources for AKS or, I mean, you can do a bunch of things here, right? So that's what I'm going through with this presentation with you. And I hope it, by the end of this presentation, you have a fundamental knowledge about how to do that and realize how easily it is to do that. I'm going to present myself first. My name is Rai Carneiro, I am Brazilian, and I currently work as a Senior Partner Technical Consultant at Microsoft. I'm a former Microsoft MVP, and I have been working with Microsoft technologies for quite a while. Well, first, we're going to talk about Azure DevOps and a little bit about DevOps, to be honest, DevOps in general. So just make sure that we are on the same page. Well. When it comes to technology, when it comes to delivering software that matters, we are always with focus on business needs, right? And what business needs is always, if not 100% of the time, to have a innovation, okay? And how do you deliver innovation? I'm not talking about any specific project or any specific tool. I'm talking about how you can be faster to provide a faster business innovation through adoption of cloud services or anyway, any other way for providing what your business need. Of course, when it comes to deploying applications or deploying any kind of IT related service, it comes to costs, okay? But if you are using cloud, you need to make sure that you're making um, the best way to be efficient in order to use that cloud cloud provider service okay because that's going to bring to bring costs for your business um, also we need to think and consider our speed and agility in order to reduce time to market and deliver what needs to be delivered so that we can be ahead of the competition and also to do that in general we need to think about how we can control our process, how we can do things in the best way to secure, to be predictable, and also to be flexible with service delivery and operations capability. This brings DevOps. So what is DevOps in a general way? Well, actually, it's a cycle where you can deliver what needs to be delivered. And also, uh, when it comes to DevOps, the meaning is dev and operation. So how do you manage people, process and tooling? And how do you deliver fast and in the best way? Uh, there is a life cycle for that. So we are calling these now DevOps. Um, in the past, if you don't remember or if you don't know, uh, it used to be something like application life cycle development or something like that. But now generally we are talking about DevOps and it's a cycle. Okay. It's a cycle that is continuous where you can create software, deliver software, test your software. And that cycle will repeat itself because you will always be delivering content. You will always be delivering software every time and business changes and everything changes. So you need to be ready for that. But we're not going to talk so much about DevOps here. I just would like to keep on the same page. Well, when it comes to DevOps, we have a lot of toolings, okay? So one of them, a big famous tooling that we have nowadays, it's Azure DevOps. And in Azure DevOps in general, we're going to talk about pipelines, okay? So let's say here from the left side, you see that engineer icon. Okay, usually talking about Microsoft development, you would you would use, for example, Visual Studio or any other IDE for the development. And also you would need to have repos to have saved, to have your work saved, right? Like using Git or something like that. And then on the third step, you would have, for example, Azure test plans. And then on the first, on the first step, you have Azure pipelines. That's our focus for the session presentation. 
And usually what you do is when you are working, especially with Microsoft tooling or any other Microsoft service, you are, for, for example, if you are running on Microsoft Azure, you would do a deployment to uh, Azure Web Apps or you would deploy a container or something like that, okay? But on this session, as I mentioned, we are going to think a little bit further and we're going to, uh, and I'm going to show you and you will follow me here on how to do a different deployment, okay? In this case, we're going to use Azure Pipelines but we are not going to deploy to Microsoft Azure. We are going to deploy to Red Hat OpenShift cluster that is outside of Azure Pipeline. So this is a different approach, okay? Well, just talking very brief briefly about Red Hat OpenShift, if you don't know what is this, this is a Kubernetes distribution. We focus on developer experience and application security that is application agnostic. So why do I say that? I say that because you are able, for example, to do the provision of uh, a Node.js application. You are able to run, I don't know, .NET Core applications using containers and so forth. So if you don't know much about Red Hat OpenShift, I totally encourage you to do so, to learn a little bit about it and how you can take advantage of this uh, uh, great distribution. Well, and then how about integrating Azure solutions and Red Hat OpenShift? Okay, so th th this will be the focus of, the, of my demo and I will do this demo right away and I hope you like it. Okay, so first things first, right? Before starting my demo, I will show you a step that we need to do here that is for installing OpenShift extension. If you're not aware of it, there is a marketplace, uh, Azure DevOps marketplace, where you can find not only this extension, but many others. If you want to publish any extension that you created, you can do this here and any other company can get it for free or you can buy it. Okay. You can buy a subscription for this um, extension. So in this case, I'm going to show you how to get it. It's very straightforward. You just click here, get it free. In this case, this is going to ask for your credentials. And here, in this case, I have an organization on Azure DevOps and I'm just choosing which one I want to install. It's very easy. Just choose, click install. It's very fast. And then after doing the installation, you, you are all set to start this demo. Okay, so I go here. I go back to to my Azure DevOps instance here. And if you wanna make sure that I have installed it, you have two ways. You can go here on organization settings, and then you can search for the menu here, extensions. And then you see all the extensions that you have installed. So I can see that I have successfully installed OpenShift extensions here. Or if you want a shortcut, you can click here and you can manage your extensions that will redirect you to the same way that we are right now, okay? So the first thing that I have to do is this. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to establish a connection between Azure DevOps and Red Hat OpenShift, okay? So in order to do that, we can go straight ahead on Azure DevOps and create a service connection. And that's what I'm gonna show you. Basically, um, coming back here to our, our organization, we can come here on our project and then you need to go on the project settings right here. And then on project settings, that will be an option that will be service connections. Okay, this menu here will take you to uh, the service co connection workspace where, where you can create new service connection by clicking on this button right here. And by doing that, you can see that you have a bunch of options here when, when it comes to service connections. Okay, for example, Bitbucket and any other uh, outside service. So if you search here for OpenShift or only Shift, this is going to give me this option to establish this uh, new service connection. We have some kind of authentications here, for example, basic authentication, token-based authentication and no authentication at all. We're going to choose token-based authentication and to do that, he's going to require me 
to to pass some information for example server url and in this case we need an api token to do that so okay so it's very easy um we come in here to the red red um website developers.redhat.com and then you can create if you're going to do the same approach you can create a sandbox for yourself and do the same approach that i'm going to show you um, this is the view that you're going to have as a developer you can click here and you can change this view for administrator that's the first thing after doing that you see that you have some projects here a stage environment and a development environment so what we're going to do right here where my username is is appearing i'm going to click here and you can see that there is an option copy login command okay i'll click here this is going to open another page for me where i will select my dev sandbox and then this is going to give me some secret information i click here on display token and after doing that this is my api token that i need to copy then i come back here to azure devops and i put this information here on api token i also need to provide the server url and i'm going to do that because i have this information right here so let me copy and go back to azure devops server connection and after pasting this information i will be able um, to save it and of course i just need to provide here a service connection name i would name it um, open shift connection and i'm going to save that so as long as that token is available we can go ahead and we can create this connection between azure devops so far so good so right now let's go back here to my organization let's select my project and then i go to the pipelines options here on azure devops and i'm going to create a new pipeline here by clicking on this blue button okay um in this case let me show you that i have a simple project here on my github it's called it, it, it's basically a node.js example it's only going to give me a simple page but what i'm going to do is i'm coming to my pipeline and i will click on github option that will prompt me here a list of all of my repositories i'm going to select my node.js application here and then what this is going to do is this is going to create a pipeline for me a simple pipeline that i will provide here and choose node.js this is going to give me a azure pipeline uh, yaml file with some standard tasks here okay this is coming with a number one here because i already have this file on my azure pipelines okay so if i show you if i come back here to my github you can see that i already have this file here so instead of replacing it this is just adding a new one i don't want it to add a new one i just want to show you that uh, what i did here after creating that uh, file was to specify some new tasks so what i'm going to do is i will trigger every time that i come to my master branch which means that every time any developer send codes to my master branch i will run that pipeline i will be using this ubuntu uh, vm to do that job and then i added two tasks here one of the tasks is the first thing that i'm going to do is i will um send this command here that will be oc start building node.js with the name of my application and the second task here will be i will work with um, a command only to check what is the status of my application at that particular time so that's what i'm going to do right now okay so uh instead of coming here and creating a new pipeline as this is a demo I will show you that I already have this pipeline running here. So this is the pipeline that I already run and changed some things. But before running my pipeline, I want to show you that I'm also able to do the thing, the same thing uh, by providing um, these command line tools. So if I may, I will show you that I have here this application. This is oc.exe. 
This is basically uh, the command line tooling to working with OpenShift, okay? So if I wanted to get started here and logging, I could simply do OC logging and use that same token that I have here to connect to my um, to connect there to OpenShift, okay? So I can simply pass my token here and then I need to specify the server name. So the server will be uh, provided right here also. Let me copy this. Server equals this. And then let's come back here. Okay, so I can do the same thing that I'm doing here, doing this manually through a CLI. I will do that uh, on my Azure pipeline. Okay, so just coming back here again, let me add it to my pipeline so you can see that. You can see that instead of creating a new one, I am using the same one that I already have and the commands are here, okay? All right, so let's run this pipeline and let's see what's happened. So right now I'm telling to run my pipeline on my master branch the same way as I specified there. I'm going to run this and let's see what's happened. All right, so it started my pipeline job for building my application and let's see in details what's happening here the job is running this may take a little while okay but i would like to go through with you and understand what's happening okay so the job is starting he's doing checkout of my code from github applying some nuget securities here and done, this is what we're gonna see. You can see here that he's, to, he's logging into my sandbox. He could see that we have some stages here like dev and stage. And then he's using my project, Ray Silva Dev, right? Okay, so this is working smoothly. And as an next step, he's cloning from GitHub, directly from GitHub getting the source code needed here and then for sure this is going to uh, get my source code and do a publish on my OpenShift cluster. All right, so we have created our pipeline, but it's working, okay? But we just need to make sure that we have a project on the other hand on OpenShift its side to publish to because the pipeline is created we are able to get to download that node.js from github and then publish that to openshift but before prior to doing that we need to make sure that we have a project created on openshift to publish our project to okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going back um, to our uh, ready ready ad website here you can see this is my uh, my sandbox console and then I will make sure that my previous token is not expired because I am recording this in a different time okay so what I'm gonna do is copy the login command again I will get another token okay you, do, you don't have to do this if you are doing this demo um, for the first time but as I recorded this in two parts so what you're gonna do is I will get this token API again I go back to my project here on Azure DevOps, go to service connections again, and I'm just trying to make sure that this API is not outdated, it's not expired. Then I'm saving back here. And the second thing that I'll go, um, that I'm gonna do now is I will try to log in here again, and then I will create a new project on my cluster. Then I will delete this expired token I provide the new token here and as you can see we are doing the login here okay and let's see if I can connect there that's good I'm connected there to my sandbox and you can see here that I have the development and also the staging environments and I'm using the current Ray Silva dev project um, next what I need to do is I need to create an app here then to do so remember we are downloading we are fetching the source code from github then what you're gonna do is OC new app then I'll make sure to to type here correctly github.com slash 
my username carnado net slash node js x this is the name of my project all right then the name of my app will be uh, for example my app demo 01 so let's create it so i'm doing this manually because um i did not put that on my pipeline okay but i could do that also i could create a new task there to make sure to create this application here it it's working i created a new resource there as you can see here manually okay and then what i'm going to do is now i need to expose the service to the internet then i'm going to do oc expose svc slash node.js x then probably this is going to give me a url where i can um, run my source code again okay and i'll make let's make sure that i get what is the endpoint so we're gonna type here oc get route uh, node.js example as i created right and this is going to give me this endpoint here so let's let, let's try this let's see if this is working properly i hope so uh, so let me create a new tab here and let's see okay it's working deployment from azure devops now to make sure that this is running properly i will go back to my github then this is my project okay what i'm gonna do is let's edit something here for example views let's change this index file directly from github and let's see here if there's any title that i could change or something okay so let's change this header one information here deployment done via azure devops pipeline then let's commit there Okay, and once it's it's done, the commit here as I did it, I should expect to go back to my pipeline and it's going to be triggered at soon. I hope there is a new pipeline running here. Let me refresh. Yeah, it's running here as you can see. Just took a little second to get started. Then this is going to trigger a, a new uh, pipeline to build my application and for sure that's going to publish my application also there so let's wait for, for it let's see what's going to happen okay it's checking out my code on github getting the master branch and this is going to proceed with the command that i just defined that i just created on my pipeline via the yaml file This for sure is going to take some while, so I'll come back here as soon as this implementation is done. And yeah, it's finishing my job. Okay, so my pipeline is not yet finished, but if you will go back here to the website and then, okay, deployment done via Azure DevOps pipeline. Actually, we changed that file on GitHub, so any change on master branch is going to trigger my building pipeline and through that um, file, YAML file, this is going to connect with my OpenShift and then do the upload on the cluster. So this is pretty much what I wanted to show you. Uh, I would like to, to thank you for watching my presentation. And if there's something that you would like to ask me or send me any email or, or any contact, um, as I was saying, my main contact is here. I use uh, Twitter quite a lot, so you can connect with me on Twitter. And that's it. Thank you very much.